Welcome to my channel. My name is Josh, and today I'm going to be talking about bits versus bytes, what the difference actually is for people that don't understand. And you know what? You might have clicked on this video and you might be an expert already. And now you're thinking, wait a second, you could explain this in 30 seconds. Bits are a zero or a one, and bytes are eight of them. It's as simple as that, right? Well, you're pragmatically correct, but you're technically wrong. And that's what I want to talk about today. Let's get into it. So first off, you might ask, why does this topic even matter? Most people could do a little bit of research and gain enough of a knowledge about the topic in like literally 30 seconds or a minute to know when they see advertising what the bits or the bytes are. And that's true, but the reason why it matters is because there are a lot of brands out there that are taking advantage of people's lack of knowledge on this topic. And what that's produced is an environment in pretty much all of technology seen in every corner of the industry where we have inconsistency in branding and labeling. Let me just give you one example. Most hard drives and hard drive manufacturers list their read and write speed in bytes. And there's you know, good reasons to do that because it's saving to something locally. It's not transmitting uh, tons of information as individual bits over long runs or long lines like internet is, for example. So it makes sense to describe how fast they could read and write memory in the practical manner where it actually it matters, right? But the problem is that there's lots of brands that are listing read and write speeds in bits now. Not to mention, if you're building your own custom PC and you buy a hard drive and you plan on installing that hard drive into your system, you're gonna notice that all the cables, even though they're still uh, transmitting and passing data locally, are in bits, which is a little bit weird. It's just kind of one of those inconsistencies in the industry. Because typically when we talk about local transfer, we use bytes and that's almost always the case, but then sometimes it's not. There's a lot of inconsistency in branding and labeling. And from a purely technical perspective, it doesn't really matter. In fact, everything could be just listed straight up in bits. We could just list hard drive speeds, transfer speeds, internet speeds, everything in bits and it wouldn't be an issue. But obviously there's more complexities to it than that. And that's the reason why I wanted to make this video and get into those sort of intricacies of the topic. So the first thing that you have to understand is that a bit is a zero or one. Now in this video, I'm excluding qubits. That's a whole field of quantum science. Quantum computation uses something called a qubit. I'm not gonna get into it. There's tons of other videos on the topic. We're just talking about regular computer architecture the way general mainstream computers work. In normal architecture, a bit is just a zero or one. A bit translates very literally into an actual physical thing. A zero or a one in your software in binary is written physically to an actual disk, right? Or it could be to a solid state disk where there's transistors being written to. But the idea is, is, is pretty simple actually. Really, you have zeros and ones being written onto the hard drive. Now where that gets complicated is when we start talking about bytes. Now conventional wisdom and in most computer science classes that I took, they'll teach you that a byte is eight bits. And that is fundamentally not true. It can be true, but it's not true, if that makes sense. In the same way that a car can be red, but red is not a car. A car is not red. You wouldn't associate the word car with red, but you might associate a specific car with being the color red. Well, that's the same situation, right? A byte can be one bit, and there are architectural systems where a byte is one bit, especially when we talk about uh, very low level computation in sort of more niche categories. There are systems and architectures where a byte is one bit. There are systems that have been kind of experimentally done where it's two bits, three bits, four bits, seven bits, nine bits. And even now, as we speak right now, there are institutions and universities that are working on architectural systems that use 48 bit bytes. Now, they have the reasons for doing that. I'm not gonna necessarily get into all of that, but the main thing to understand here is that a byte is just the smallest block of memory that's addressable within a given architecture. Now, if that doesn't make sense to you, all you need to understand is that hard drives write physical bits, so zeros and ones, but it's not as efficient to store data and read data as singular bits. It's more efficient to start dealing with something called words. Now, on a 32-bit architectural system, something like x86 or modern ARM, pretty much in every case, when you talk about the balance between read and write speeds, but also not wasting memory, 8-bit systems are just the most efficient. They hit that balance just right. But larger bit bytes read and write faster and can pass data faster and more efficiently, 
And the opposite is also true, where data passes slower, but you can waste less memory, if that makes sense. So you kind of have to balance between memory waste and how fast you can process data without having to actually do a ton of different microprocesses in order to make that data actually do something useful. So bytes aren't really a physical thing that's written to a disk, right? We're just writing bits, but then we organize on the other side, on the software side and on the hardware processing side, we organize and manage those bits in chunks that make more sense that can help us pass data faster and more efficiently. Now in the future, hardware eventually is gonna slow down. There's going to come a point when hardware completely plateaus because you just can't make transistors smaller anymore. Because if you have actually studied how atomic structure works, you would know that subatomic particles like electrons are fixed size, they don't change. They can only get so small. And hardware can only get so small until you start to have those valence electrons not able to pass from one valence to another within a certain given space because your, your technology is actually too small and it interrupts that process. So we're getting to the point now technologically where transistors can't really get smaller. So we have to find other ways to make hardware faster. And as we run out of ways, as thermals hit their limit technically, we're going to have to find software ways to do this or uh, managerial ways to do this when it comes to just passing data more efficiently. And that's why this topic matters if you're interested in computer science because the future of systems may not be binary. It might be ternary systems. And you know what, I can make a whole other video on that and I plan to, but my point is just we have to find more efficient ways to pass data faster if hardware can't continue to speed up. So that's why this topic matters and that's why it matters that we don't just keep calling bytes eight bits because in the future they may not be. We may find more efficient ways to pass data faster with larger bytes. The reason why I wanted to make this video and why it came up to begin with is because there's this new laser optical disc that's being designed by a company that IBM is either funding or purchased, I can't remember. Um, and on a lot of journalists' websites, it says that this thing can do a petabyte per second. But then I found tons of other articles that say a petabit per second. So I wanted to know, is it a petabit or is it a petabyte? And I couldn't get a clear answer. So I went to IBM's website to actually read about the technology. And even on their own website, three times it confused bits and bytes. And therefore I couldn't get a clear answer at all on how fast this disk actually reads and writes. So I contacted the journalist that wrote the article as well as IBM and they got back to me and they said, we don't know. We have no idea. We have to contact the scientists to find out more. They said they'd get back to me and they never did. So I have no idea if this disc writes bits or bytes. And I found that kind of frustrating because you wouldn't think that that would be something very complicated. If you're a scientist or you're a tech journalist, this should be a relatively simple thing to understand. But yet, you know what? There's actually not that much information on the internet about this. And when you do run into information, they pretty much condense it into a really basic form that while pragmatically makes sense, it doesn't really give you the full picture. So there's a lot of inconsistency in the world of computation over when bits and bytes should be used. But as a general rule, when we're talking about local storage, for example, my camera right now, it's recording me, it's recording live video, and it's printing that video onto an SD card. That's local, right? It's, it's not transmitting over the internet. When we're doing local data transfer, we usually use bytes to explain that. And the reason for that is because we're passing huge amounts of data, typically when we're reading and writing onto cards or onto hard drives. So it just makes more sense to use the smaller numbers so it doesn't confuse people as much. But then when you're talking about, for example, the internet or fiber optic cables, like for example, your internet speed, we typically talk about it in bits, not bytes. And I have not been able to find any very specific guidelines on when or why you should use bits or bytes. And it seems like most industries don't even follow a specific standard. I've seen SanDisk, one company, selling SD cards that are listed in bytes and SD cards from a different like series of theirs listed in bits. So I just cannot get a clear answer to that. And another good example of that would be file formats within my Sony camera. They're listed in bits, and yet all the cards in the writing process is listed in bytes. That can make things very confusing. Now, if you know about it, it's not that big of a deal because we know all you need to do is divide the bit by eight, but it just makes situations that should be simple and clear and fast to the eye more complicated, especially for people that are beginners to technology or maybe don't study computer science. So on the right side of your screen here, I'm gonna list all the different ways to write 
bytes. That could be megabytes, kilobytes, bytes themselves. It could be uh, gigabytes or petabytes. And on, on the left side of your screen, or my right, I'm gonna show bits. And one of the things that you'll notice is that bits is always an undercase B or a lowercase b. Now, what's interesting is if you're buying things on Amazon or on certain specific websites that sell technology, you will very often see listings getting this incorrectly. All over Amazon, all over BH Photo and Adorama and all the different big tech websites where we buy tech from, they get this wrong. Even Apple, I've caught them getting it wrong. Lots of brands end up confusing these because the people writing the listings themselves may not actually understand it. But the general rule to understand is that a lowercase b is a bit and an uppercase b is a byte. It's important to understand the difference between bits and bytes, not just for somebody that's a programmer or highly technical, but just for consumers as a whole, because I think there's a lot of confusion out there. And I hate seeing my friends and family constantly get the two confused and sometimes even feel like they got scammed after they buy the wrong cable and find out it's not actually fast enough for the hard drive they had. In fact, that happened to a friend of mine recently. So if you like this video, share it with your friends. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below for more content like this coming soon. See you on the next one.